This video is going to show you what the attack and release settings do on a compressor and demonstrate exactly how important they are. I started off with just an operator with a sine wave. I recorded that down into this fat sausage right here. If you zoom in, you'll see the sine wave. Then I have these three compressors. All of them are exactly the same except the attack and release settings. This one I have an instant attack and release. This one has both attack and release set to 100 milliseconds and this one has both set to one second or in this case the release is close to one second. So let's see what they're doing just by themselves. So instant attack. Ooh, that doesn't sound right. You can see it's instantly turning on and instantly turning off. Now the compressor with the longer attack and release. Notice how it took its time starting the compression and releasing afterwards. Now with the really long attack and release. This is taking a really long time to start compressing and a really long time to go back to its normal level. Now I've recorded these files down and let's see what they look like. Of course with no makeup gain turned on, these are going to be quieter. So again, let's listen to them. Now here's the one with the very fast attack and release. It's causing a distortion that can happen if you set your parameters too fast. Now let's look at the ones with 100 milliseconds attack and release. Notice here how it takes time to start compressing and then it stays at that level. You'll also hear a pop in the beginning. It's creating a transient. And this is the last one with the really long attack and release. Now those were settings with uh, peak. Peak is used more for percussive instruments that usually have a very fast strong attack like a drum hit. Now if you switch it to RMS which stands for root mean square it averages out the amplitude of the incoming signal that triggers the compression. So again I recorded everything except this time with RMS. So here are the four waveforms again. Now lastly, I have these, which are also RMS, except this time I turned on the makeup gain, which is found right here. The makeup gain is the only difference between this group and this group. It's automatically getting a lot louder just by adjusting attack and release. Now to put this in perspective, I'm going to show you the same technique on snares. So here's a snare loop. So when the gate's turned on, Okay, first, again, I have the peak settings. These compressor settings are a little bit different. So the first one I set to sound punchy, the second one I set to reduce peaks, and the third one I set the attack and release as fast as it could go. So here's the original. To get something to sound punchy, you want to give emphasis to the transient, which means you want to leave this part unaffected and compress this part to turn it down. To compress the peaks or have a very fast attack, you're going to turn up this part and turn down the beginning. Fast attacks are used to cut transients so that you can turn up the overall level. The last one with the immediate attack and release has no transient. Lastly, I did the same experiment except using RMS instead of peak. That's the original. All of them still retain their transients. If you're going to use compression, have a purpose for it. Don't just use it because you want to. In this case, I wanted to make the snare more punchy. 
versus the original. So what I wanted to do is turn down this later tail, but leave the beginning intact. A long attack will pass the transients, while a short attack grabs them and turns them down with the rest of what you're compressing. In this case, I wanted it to sound cleaner and quicker, although it may be one or two decibels quieter. If you have any other questions about compressing, leave a comment below or check out one of my other videos on compression.